Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. This is the complete paint job guide, episode number five, where we're gonna get this thing all painted up. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. And thank you for joining me on this episode. On the last episode, we got all of our primer all completely blocked out, and then we washed the whole car down. We went around all the little edges, and we got everything ready for paint. And in this episode, we're gonna show you how to get it all taped up and how to do a full paint job. And today, we have Scorpion Paint helping us and show us some of his tips and tricks from all his years of experience. So the first thing we're gonna be doing before we bring it into the booth is we making sure we cleaned it off. Now you remember from last episode, we did do a full wash, but you can never be too clean. So what Pedro's doing is going around with a water-based cleaner, and we'll link everything in the description so you can use it for your project. And he's just doing a final wipe. Now when we get inside of the booth and get it all taped down, we'll do yet another wipe. So you can never be too, too clean. And once you have it all cleaned off, now it's time to get it all up in the booth. So I will go ahead and reverse it in here, and then we'll start the uh, masking process. So I run the same foam tape like Pedro did along my whole side, right in here. And then over here, we put some six inch masking paper so we can paint this edge. And don't forget to put some max masking tape on the inside of the door. So when it closes, none of that overspray can get through. We have a nice seal here with our foam tape. So we're good all around. Now it's time to open up the sunroof so we can mask around the edge. A little trick for you guys. I use a little plastic from a touch up container and I put it through the hole here to keep this bezel down. Uh, that way, we're now we're gonna take our back masking, we'll back mask around here, and then we'll put some paper down. Back masking pretty much is masking the, using the back of the uh, piece of tape, and we'll do it like this. Now we'll leave a soft edge, similar to the foam, and then we can place our paper right on top of that. Then we'll simply take some 18 inch paper and we'll tape uh, both sides to our back masking area and then we'll just cut it out. When it's done, it will look something just like this, a nice cleanly masked sunroof. We'll use this channel right here to back mask just the same way we did on the sunroof. Over on Pedro's side, he already masked up his doors. Now he's gonna take some 18 inch paper. Now you can use paper or plastic, but when you're doing a complete paint job, it might be a touch easier to use the paper only because there's such a limited amount of areas that are getting covered, okay? And if you use the paper, it might be a touch quicker to, uh, to get done. And then he'll just trim on that foam tape, just like that. And then we'll tape onto the foam tape. And then you'll tape right to that foam tape and you'll have a nice seamless tape job.
And on this side, we'll do the same thing that Pedro did on the driver's side. We'll find our foam tape and we'll just cut along that line. Now you can always put a piece of masking paper down first if you're not really good at this and you're concerned about digging in and not getting right on your foam tape. That is perfectly fine to do, but there is a gap here that the uh, razor fits nicely into that you'll be able to find exactly where to cut perfectly. Nice razor also helps out, brand new every time. The longer the piece of tape, the cleaner the job. You get less of a chance of overspray getting through. So try to keep long pieces of tape when possible. And then we'll run a piece the whole way lengthwise just to seal up that gap. On this side, Pedro's taping up the wheelhouse area. Let me show you how he did it. What you want to do first is get some solvent-based cleaner and really clean up in here. Although we've already done it before, we want to make sure that our tape is not going to come off. See, we still picked up a little bit of black. So clean up everything really, really good. So when you're spraying, you don't have any of that moving plastic or tape or whatever it is that you're using. Then once again, we'll take our back masking and we'll only back mask under the back of the wheel here. Here where the retainer clip is, since it's a flat surface and the bumper uh, matches up to it, and go ahead and just do a nice piece of flat tape. Now we'll take our 36 inch white paper, cover this up. So basically what we'll do is we'll take our 36, we'll line the bottom up with the ground, and then we'll just tape on to our back masking and then we'll cut out. Now we'll mask back up right over that edge gap to seal it in. On the front windshield here, you can see we just took that 36 inch and it covered pretty much the whole windshield. And now we're just taking it down over here. There's a molding that covers this whole area. So we're gonna use a natural body line to tape right onto. And we can see it's looking really, really good. So what we have left here is the hood and the trunk. Over on the hood, same thing, the back masking. Remember what back masking is, we're taking the tape, turning it upside down. And now that creates a nice soft edge underneath. And then when we put the uh, hood down into position, then we'll just put our paper over it. On our front end here, place down some 18 inch paper, cut along the dotted line, and then we'll just pull it off. And then tape along that same edge. Once again, you guys see the pattern here, back mask, paper or plastic tape. And you can bring it probably about a quarter of an inch away from the panel, that's going to keep it nice and clean. I then push it down really nice, make sure there's no gapping. These are the small little things that will help you out and prevent from dirt. A lot of you guys might say, I get a lot of dirt in my paint. Comes from a tape job. On the back side of the trunk, I'll back mask just like we did on the hood. And then I'm gonna mask right on this edge so no overspray gets inside because the inside of this trunk is painted. Then I'm gonna tape off this rubber here because there's all dry overspray in here. So what we'll do is we'll allow the overspray just to sit in there and make this area look a little bit nicer than what it is right now. And then we'll close our trunk. And that area is good. 
Skipping back to our front side, we're gonna do one big piece of paper actually across the whole entire front. Uh, a little bit more, we're good. And then we'll just hit up all of our back masking areas and then we'll cut it out. On the back of the trunk here, back mask once again, we'll back mask into this area. Pedro, uh, underneath the uh, tail light, we can hard edge it because it's the inside. So there's no need to soft edge it. Pretty much what you wanna do, do first is border everything out. You kinda see how we're doing it here. We border everything out and then we're gonna put our 36 inch paper here as well. Now we'll just cut it off. Pedro right now, all he's doing is he's going around and uh, taping back up. This is the last part to get taped up and then we'll start getting into the painting process. Our vehicle is all masked up and we're ready to get some sealer on it. Now we'll do one final cleaning before paint, but let's talk about sealer. The sealer is gonna help us get to our color a lot easier. The sealer that we use is Color Build and it's a tangerine orange that we'll be using first to put on the panels. The sealer is great for little burn throughs or cut throughs, last minute little areas that you didn't spot. It's like a primer, okay? But you can't take your primer and thin it out. You need to be able to purchase an actual sealer. All right, so the sealer that we're gonna be using is going to be sprayed out of a 1.4 fluid tip. Should cover in one good coat, and that's gonna help us get less coats of base. So hopefully we'll get out of this in two or three coats of base, rather than five or six from a very transparent color. And once again, this is color build, and it comes with all these different colors that you can make. And we're gonna be using this one right here because it's closest. If we take a look, these are the different toners that will make up that color, including white and black over here. We're choosing to mix up 60 ounces for the complete car. First, it requires red and a lot of it. Probably gonna use this whole thing, so we'll just take it off and we'll pour it in. We're short a little bit. That's why it always helps to check your color before you paint. Now we can finish up the mix and get all of our red toner in. Next up is black. Next up is yellow, 653. Now we'll add our sealer hardener. This is what's gonna make it all harden up. Next up is going to be our reducer. This is gonna help it flow out. Next thing to do is get it all mixed up and mix it thoroughly. We can see that we already have that reddish orange tone to it. We're ready to clean off the car once again. We've already cleaned it off, but now we're gonna do it one final time because our hands have been on it. So make sure you're using the appropriate uh, gloves and we have prep towels. Now what we'll do is we'll spray water on and Pedro's gonna go ahead and wipe it off. You gotta make it somewhat wet and wipe it as best as you can in one direction. That way we're not smearing it. You can see in some areas where the um, cleaner might get, might get stuck up on a certain area. You're gonna wanna go over that. So make sure when you spray it, you're really looking to see, hey, is this cleaner going on evenly or is it kinda puddling up around a certain area? That would be a good indication that there might be some sort of contamination. See, Pedro's gonna go ahead and give it one good clean wipe all across the whole panel. And then he'll continue this around the whole car. Now we're gonna be using a solvent-based cleaner. Now this will remove different contaminants like oils or grease, whereas the water-based from before will remove just fingerprints, things like that. 
So with this one, it's the same thing. We'll get over the whole entire car. We'll get it clean and then it's good to go for our sealer coat. And as a final, what we'll do is Pedro will go around and he has a tack cloth, a brand new one. And he's just gonna go over the whole surface of the panel and uh, make sure that any last lint that may have dropped, and we're not gonna get it all, but uh, really help us out getting most of it down. And we're ready to seal. We're gonna be using a 3M performance gun. Pedro and I are gonna be using a 1.2. We'll start from the bottom, and then I'll work our way down. Sealer coat is down, Pedro and I knocked it out. Now we're good. So we're gonna put about two or three coats of our base coat on. And man, this thing's just gonna look really, really good. Let me show you about the paint and how we get it mixed up. So I got a gallon size can, empty one. And for those of you that work at a shop and you have a mixing bank, this is great if you're painting a whole car because you mix everything at once and you're good to go, same consistency. And I got about six toners to mix into this mix. So let's get started. Got all the toners mixed in, very important. We're using an extra slow reducer. You wanna use that because that's gonna keep the paint nice and silky smooth all the way through. And that is the color, habanero red. Let's get spraying.
Oh, we got two coats down, we got good coverage. Now we're gonna do like a drop coat. So basically we're gonna take our distance and increase it just a little bit, maybe three or four inches, and make sure we have a nice orientation on everything. You're good. Three coats down, it's looking really, really good. We're going ahead and lay down our clear. You wanna make sure that everything is completely covered. So go ahead and check it with a sunlight with the lights off. That's really gonna help you out. Pedro and I are gonna lay it down. Let's get started. I'll do something out here, wherever I can reach.
Pedro, the man, tall enough to help me get that roof. Thanks again so far for this project and helping us out. Man, let's check it out. We're looking good. We put two wet coats on. I'm not gonna bake it. I don't wanna bake it yet, or I just wanna let it dry off on its own. That way we're not introducing any heat. Uh, we don't want any solvent pop or anything like that. It's got a few dirt nibs, one, two, probably about two or three per panel. Uh, a couple in the hood, that's normal. All right, really clean. We'll show you a buffing video once we get this thing all back together. The roof came out phenomenal. Look at this, guys. This is looking, wow. It looks even better on camera. It's got like a candy red on camera, but it's more of like a maroonish uh, uh, orange here in person. So we'll allow this to dry, and then we'll go ahead and pull this thing out.
And that's going to wrap things up for this episode. On the next episode, we're going to get this Honda Civic back into the shop and get the remaining accessories and wheels and tire package installed on the vehicle. We'll also take you through some steps to remove common paint imperfections and get it all buffed up. And a little surprise, we're going to be adding a body kit. This is Brian from Paint Decider reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint.